G'day guys, Matt from Haltech here, and today on Technically Speaking, we're going to be discussing the benefits and drawbacks of soldering versus crimping versus twist and tape in your automotive wiring harnesses. So if you've sat around the racetrack for more than a minute or two, you've probably heard people arguing about the merits of soldering your wiring connections versus crimping. Some guys swear by the soldering iron and they say things like soldering's more reliable because it forms a chemical bond or soldering is less bulky or my very favorite I've been soldering joints in all of my wiring jobs for the past 20 years I've never had a problem while on the other side of the fence you've got your hardcore crimping advocates who are screaming things into the void like yeah but all that heat it's annealing the wire and it's weakening it and have you ever seen a cracked or dry solder joint? whilst also spouting the very same, I've been crimping all my joints for the last 20 years and I've never had a problem. So who is right? Does soldering really anneal the wire and weaken it? Can a crimp joint really be as strong as that chemical bond? Well, let's dig into the fundamentals of both methods of connection and find out once and for all, which is best. So let's first take a look at the solder connection. Solder connections are formed by melting a small amount of alloy into and around the two wires being joined. This requires the use of a soldering iron and of course, the solder material itself. As the solder is melted, it wicks its way up and into the two wires. And then when left to cool, it reforms as a hard interpenetrating connection that mechanically bonds the strands of the two wires together. So looking at a nicely formed solder joint on the surface, it's really easy to see why many people believe that this is the ultimate in joining wire techniques. It's strong, it's not bulky, and there's excellent electrical conductivity between the two wires being joined. Now, it is important to note that once the joint has been made, it still needs to be covered by an insulating material, either heat shrink or worst case, just a tape to cover the join. So let's contrast that now with a typical crimping connection. In this method of joining two wires, there's no heat required and there's no chemical bonding happening. A crimp join just uses old fashioned compression to hold the joint of two wires together. And for joining two wires together, we typically use something like one of these open barrel crimps. We overlap the wire and crimp down the crimp using a correctly sized crimping tool. A crimp join is also strong. It doesn't need to be bulky and it also offers excellent electrical conductivity between the two wires being joined. Again, after this joint is made, it should be covered in an insulating material. Let me just state it here, that done poorly, both soldered and crimp connections are bad. A good solder joint is better than a bad crimp and vice versa, a good crimp is better than a bad solder joint. But we're not here to have that argument today. Today, we wanna to find out what is king when everything is done well. Which brings us to the twist and tape method of joining two wires. You see the twist and tape method, it might have its place, it's just not in your car, it's not in an engine management system, and it's not gonna win you any friends here today. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Now with that out of the way, what is the best way to join two wires in an automotive wiring harness, crimp or solder? Well, if you ask me, 90% of the time, the crimp is the superior connection method in a wiring harness. The two biggest problems you see with a solder connection in a wire harness is corrosion, and cracking due to either mechanical stress or vibration. Cracking of solder joins in wiring harnesses is not all that uncommon an occurrence after many years of service. And you don't need to search the common problems with XYZ vehicle before you start to stumble across many instances where an OEM vehicle manufacturer has used a solder join in a harness that commonly cracks or corrodes, which causes any number of issues. On this point, I personally replaced a cracked solder joint in a late model T5 Volkswagen transporter van that's my own car just last week that was causing all sorts of body control module problems. This same issue wouldn't have occurred in a crimp connection. Now, that's not to say there's no place for a solder join in the automotive application. Anytime there's a PCB or a printed circuit board involved, we want to use a solder join. The other time we may be using solder joins over a crimp is where we don't have a mating connector for a sensor. So we've got to make a direct wire connection between a pin and a wire. In that case, I'd also solder a wire directly to the pin rather than use pin to pin connection. Of course, after making the solder connection, we need to retain the entire connector 
by backpotting the enclosure to prevent any movement of the wires away from the pin. Now here's a common question though. If crimping's good and soldering's not as good, but still okay, is both crimping and soldering the best? Well, the simple answer to that, perhaps counterintuitively, is no. Adding solder to a crimp joint does not improve the crimp. In fact, it's detrimental because the additional heat that is added to the wire and the solder that inevitably wicks up the wire can actually weaken the wire itself and make the join more susceptible to cracking. So, what's the takeaway for today? Firstly, get yourself a set of quality crimping tools like these bad boys that we sell here at Haltech. Find yourself a quality supply of open barrel crimps in a multitude of sizes for joining one, two, or 10 wires together. Don't forget to add some high quality heat shrink to the join before you make the join. Personally, I really enjoy a quality glue lined heat shrink where the space allows. And finally, don't be afraid to pull out the soldering iron and make those one-off random connections, but only if you've got a way to mechanically retain the entire join. Well, I'm Matt from Haltech. I can't wait to read all the comments that you throw at me below. Don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you haven't already, subscribe to our newsletter and please, Give us a follow on the socials. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.